Hi, I'm Mario, and this is one video in a series where I install an auxiliary battery bank, a lithium battery bank, in my Chevy Colorado. And before we go any further into this video, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that I'm not telling anybody how to do any work on their truck, on electrical systems, anything of that nature. This is simply for entertainment purposes, and this is just demonstrating what I did to my truck. So I hope to keep this video relatively short. <laughs> um, but the idea is, is that I'm, I'm hoping to get to a spot where I can include everything, where at least I have this shelf mounted inside the, uh, inside the truck, and I can show you that process uh, to get that mounted in the truck, firmly secured. But I do want to also kind of provide some insight as to the direction I'm going, the general direction, and that is I want to make sure that these batteries are mounted securely to my platform, mounted to the truck. And I want to be able to make sure that the batteries are not um, exposed to cargo shifting or, you know, whatever, the elements in general. And so obviously I have a couple positive posts um, here that can uh, create a short circuit if I was to, uh, you know, I could arc that to ground pretty easily. So um, the other thing I'm taking into consideration is the, um, well, heat. This thing is going to generate heat. When this accepts a charge from the alternator or from some solar panels, uh, there could be a substantial amount of heat generated uh, in these lithium batteries. I mean, think about your phone charging or something um, or your laptop. And so uh, I want to protect this, but at the same time, I don't want to enclose it in such a way that it overheats. And there are some hurdles that I'm encountering. Maybe not hurdles, but as an example. So this dowel here is made of acetylpropylene. And uh, you might hear this referred to as POMC or POMC. And it's the same product as this uh, base here, very dense plastic. So the problem isn't really with the product, but my concept that I could use these dowels as standoffs underneath this foundation, underneath this uh, black piece here, this shelf. And what's happening is, is that it's just causing me to work under really tight tolerances. So as an alternative, I want to introduce some nailers that can go underneath here. So basically this will act as furring underneath. I have the floor pan of the truck, which is metal. And so what I will do is I'll mount these pieces here underneath the shelf. There's also gonna be one spot where I will mount, and that is, it's, it'll be located directly here. So there's, um, in the floor pan, there's some existing mounts that I wanna use. This will, this area here will be the back of the passenger seat. So there's two, M10 screws, bolts that will fit in here. There's another bolt that normally goes uh, right here in this spot. Basically the tire irons were mounting uh, there. So that was where the, uh, the back seat would normally be. There is a big bolt there holding down the tire irons. So I'm gonna use those three existing points. Um, the two points up here, which will sit about right here. Um, I'm gonna drill in here and I'm gonna have to I th I'm thinking some, uh, maybe some nut rivets. I'm gonna drill some holes where the front of the passenger seat would be located here. So that's the idea. And then back to this uh, plastic. What I've done is this is not a acetyl. And um, I don't know that there's much of a weight savings using this product here, but this is um, high density polyethylene, which I laminated. So these are glued together here. And then I have additional pieces that I can use as shims. So I have these quarter inch uh, strips that I can use possibly if needed to further uh, shim up the product. So the idea is to get a nice firm level platform to mount the batteries and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is gonna work. I wanna touch on one thing with respect to these uh, nailers that I've created, this furring material. I, I, don't believe I really needed to uh, laminate this product, but I went ahead and did so because, well, 
first off, let me say, there's, gonna, there's another video where I went through the lamination process for this high density polyethylene, HDPE. And in general, as a rule, you don't do that. You don't glue plastics together, whether it's acetal or whatever. You wanna mechanically fasten it. And so all of these products will be mechanically fastened. But in addition, I went ahead and uh, just for ease of install, maybe, I don't know how easy it's making things, but I went ahead and laminated it. And then I can also check in the future to see how it manages, uh, you know, basically the environment. I'm gonna have uh, varying barometric pressures, elevations, temperatures. And so it'll be interesting to see how well this, uh, this glue uh, lasts. But everything is gonna be dependent on fasteners. So there are some definite hurdles with these batteries because uh, they are not symmetrical, meaning, um, so obviously they're not a perfect uh, square or cube, but the point is, is that they actually taper inward and they taper in like this and they taper in from the side. And so I was thinking of various approaches and I think what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to use these as guides of where the base will reside. And so I will fasten these to my shelf and then I will use uh, these for lateral shifting. And so the direction I'm going here is I want to build a box around the batteries but I don't want to restrict the amount of airflow and overheat them. So what I think I'm going to do is start with all four sides and leave the top open. And that's where I'm going to start. And as a, the product that I want to use is I'm also going to use some, uh, continue using the HDPE. So this is high density polyethylene and this is three quarter inch thick and I don't need three quarter inch thick HDPE. The reason why I chose the three quarter inch is that I want to perhaps use the sides, one or more sides, to mount the controller, mount different uh, maybe uh, circuit breakers, to mount a bus bar, to mount even a uh, possibly even mount a uh, an inverter. So I want to use that surface area twofold at least I'm going to attempt. And then the other idea is that um, because of the taper to accommodate for that and to allow airflow on the outside surface. So I have these cleats. This is also the polyethylene and they're um, three quarter inch thick and then one inch wide. And I'm gonna lay them flat as so. And then this way the base of the batteries can reside in there and hopefully that'll prevent any lateral movement. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but I'm also going to have to make sure that the batteries don't move vertically. Uh, so for up and down movement, the concept is to use a strap. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, just make one strap go all the way through and around. So in other words, I will cut a slit in the base, in the shelf, and basically wrap this all the way around the battery. So I know this seems overly complex. Trust me, I would, I've been racking my brain trying to find a way that I could simplify this, and I'm just not really finding a good solution. Hopefully, as hopefully this platform will serve more purposes than simply mounting the batteries. So I'm gonna have, you know, accessories in my truck. Uh, I'm gonna have a refrigerator. I'm gonna have other things. So uh, hopefully this platform, I can build on this platform and that's why I'm focusing so much on the batteries. Not to mention, I wanna protect the batteries. I don't want them vibrating around. I don't want them, uh, you know, moving. I don't want them uh, moving ever so slightly and then rubbing and then, uh, you know, wearing the sides and that sort of thing. If these have a 10 year lifespan, I want them to have a nice little home to, to sit in. I might change out the walls and change out the, the structure, but I feel confident about the base. And in order to accommodate the base, I'm going to need some sort of strap. So that's the idea here. You know, I have ba the basic Home Depot strap 
And so let me elaborate on what I'm thinking here as I'm kind of thinking out loud. But basically, I'll modify this strap that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. And um, so I'm just going to cut off that one end, and that'll be trash. And then the idea is that I can also eliminate this hook end here. So I don't really need this hook. All I really need is this strap. So this is a one inch strap. I mean, like I mentioned, that's just an off the shelf item. You see them all over the place and you see the batteries mounted with it. But what I don't like are those hooks. And, I, and the one inch strap does fit in the existing guides here. Back to what I was trying to get at is I want this to wrap around here 360 degrees the entire way. Now all I have is this buckle left. So what I'm going to do, what I intend to do is basically I'm going to double this up. So I cut that hook off and now I can put my strap through and then I'll just basically double this up. I can have my ratchet on top I'll double the strap up and I'll feed it around the batteries, come up the other side, and then I can feed double the strap through the ratcheting mechanism. This ratchet has a very small footprint, and so the idea is, let's see if you, I don't know if you could see that or not. Um, the idea is, is to provide some sort of uh, footing here, some sort of base, and I think I'll just place some sort of uh, polyethylene plastic. I got an HDPE there, and just kind of set that on top there. And I want the ratchet to kind of stay put. I don't want things sliding around. So this product here is used to line um, toolboxes. You can, you know, at the box store they'll have it available. So maybe something like that to help it not slide around. Another uh, option might be uh, this product here, which is something I got, I think, Walmart or whatever, Target. Um, and these are to line the drawers of uh, kitchen cabinets. So some sort of combination of these two products uh, should work pretty good here. In order for all these fantastic ideas to work, I'm going to have to basically connect all of these components together. I did some tests. This is the HDPE, and so I drilled some uh, pilot holes uh, into this product, uh, you know, from the side at this angle. And the idea here is I'm going to use basic wood screws. So, for example, here is a number eight uh, wood screw. And then, um, so I drilled some pilots and went kind of small with my drill bit. And it seemed like if I went too small that it was kind of separating the plastic and pushing it away. So I'm going to, the drill bit will be pretty close to the shank size of the screw. Um, and also I'm going to just countersink to get the, uh, to get the screw head out of the way. So these are, uh, so because I'm using a countersink, the idea is I'm using the flathead uh, screw. So I am going to be using some bolts. I'm not just going to be using the wood screws. Um, the bolts I'm going to be using are going to be associated with this uh, furring product. So I'm going to attach these feet to the floor pan of the truck. And so to do that, I think I'm going to go ahead and use a Forstner bit to counter bore into the footing. And then that way the bolt will reside below the surface plane uh, of my footing. And then I can come in afterwards with longer uh, wood screws. Like for instance, these number 10 two inch wood screws, I can go through the half inch acetyl platform and into the footing, you know, maybe three or four. I don't think it's going to take too many of these. So if these are the walls to go around the battery, I'm going to have to somehow uh, join the corners. And so uh, I think what I'm going to do is just use the most simple joint. And I'm not, I wanted, I was thinking like maybe doing a dado cut on the, uh, edges, but it just started getting really complicated. 
And so I'm just going to come in with some, maybe some number eight screws here. And that's another reason why I'm gonna go in thick. So I, I'm gonna drill some pilots and then just kinda screw this together here and then maybe use some hardware to enforce the corners. So I can, with some smaller wood screws, maybe put some angle brackets on the top or on the inside corners. And so that's the idea here to, uh, to build out that box. All right, well enough jabbering. Let's get this platform mounted inside the truck.